What's up? My name is Chris Smith, and this is a short walkthrough of how to build a little UI or admin panel for your GraphQL endpoint. Check it out. So you have a GraphQL API endpoint and some database, and you want to build a simple UI for maybe administration or testing or even building out a simple internal tool or app. I'll walk you through how I built this UI that allows me to have an admin panel for my GraphQL endpoint. This allows me to delete users from this users table, add new users, edit existing ones, and view all of the data in that table. And I built this in about 10 minutes using Retool, which is a front-end framework similar to React, but more visual. It gives you access to a bunch of pre-built components like tables, buttons, charts, modals, and many more, which you can drag and drop onto your user interface. And you can link in different API resources like our GraphQL endpoint, or databases like MySQL, Postgres, etc., and run specific queries, which you then map into the user interface. And you can explore all of the metadata and variables associated with this app on the left-hand panel and really go deep into the data structures and get access to the various properties and methods. Now let's walk through the app in a little bit more detail. So as mentioned, there's three components, your left-hand panel, the bottom panel, and the right panel. So I dragged in the table here and a text field so that I could link in my queries. And let's just walk through how the queries were set up. So the first thing I did was add my GraphQL resource. So let's expand this, we can see it. And I have a set of queries here, one for listing users from the database one for deleting a user, which is linked to this delete button, one for inserting a user, which is linked to this plus button here, and one for updating a user, which is linked to whenever modification is made in the table. And looking at the list users GraphQL query in more detail, we can see the syntax of the query in the query editor. You can also explore the schema for the GraphQL endpoint. So I can preview this and see that it's making a call out and returning some data back. And the data for this table is being populated from the list users query, referencing the data object and the users array. Next, our delete user query is just linked to a delete action button in the table, which you can create by clicking new action. And then we've linked that to this delete user query and that'll populate based on whichever queries you have set up in the bottom panel. And the delete user is passing in the selected row ID. And so when this button is clicked, it'll take this ID and pass that through to the GraphQL query. For updating a user, the values in this table as they're updated will populate to a property called record updates, which will be an array of the changes in that table. So I'm just referencing those changes and passing those into this mutation for updating users by primary key. And lastly, the insert user query will grab the new row values. So you can see here, we've got table.newrow.firstname. So let's just write this. And we can see that that's populating and the reference is successfully passing through. And so when save changes is clicked here, the updated rows will pass through to the update user query and the new row will pass through to this insert user query. So that completes the walkthrough of this simple GraphQL UI. You can do a whole lot more here. You can insert all sorts of different components. You can start to build out more complex links between these different objects, do lookups against other object types, or even call into other databases if you're trying to unify data across systems. So I hope this is a helpful walkthrough of how you can build a simple UI for your GraphQL endpoint. Let me know if you have any questions and thanks for watching.